What's up, everybody? It's Sound Control here. Um, just chilling in my studio right now. Um, got this beat loaded up that I've been working on for a little bit this afternoon. And I wanted to share um, some of the approach that went behind making of this beat. So it's slightly different. I'm just going to go through and play you a quick snippet of it. So... So that was the beat, y'all. Um, obviously, it's not complete. I'm going to probably afterwards add some R&B keys or maybe some Neo Soul, something along those lines. Depending on how it sounds going into the DAW, um, I might go Neo Soul or I might continue down this like futuristic lo-fi type area. But um, as you can hear, um, there's a lot going on, and that's intentional. Um, and that's because I'm kind of like having a lot of things going on in the beat, so it's not kind of a boring backdrop, you know, because like when you think of a great portrait or picture, I like to, I, I generally like pictures with nice backgrounds and lots of context to them, so these sounds are kind of like, giving you context clues or it, it doesn't even have to be a specific context but like whoever decides to make a song over this they have all this um they have all this open area to you know they have liberty to, to do what they want here so i'm just gonna go one by one each track Skip all the talk. <laughs> yeah, go on one by one with each track. Let's start out with track one. Let's see what's on track one. So, okay, so with track one, um, I have two so sounds coming out of track one. I have like an 808, like, I think when I was making the beat, I just, you know, laid down two tricks. And then obviously you hear this like sort of background um, noise going on. Um, this sound is actually filtered, so I'm going to try to show you guys what, what it sounds like unfiltered. This is unfiltered. We're going to filter that back up. Yeah, so basically my thought process behind that was after playing around with the two trigs, um, I heard that the 808 got cut off by this background noise thing and normally this type of thing would throw me off and I wouldn't put this together in a track but I kind of liked how the sounds clashed and how it was just like it, they cut off each other so it's like because they're mono the samples are mono well it's audio stereo but it's monophonic in terms of how the samples can be played so um, I like how they're cutting each other off, so it's providing a nice backdrop, literally a, a backdrop. So let's go to the next track. So this was track two. Also, let me actually mute track two before I go to track two. As you notice, and you'll notice this with other tracks, I'm doing a lot between the different scenes. Maybe not so much with this track, since it's the primary backdrop. But if I bring in this uh, track two, you obviously hear that this is uh, like a like a like birds. So what I'm really doing between scenes, I'm really like focusing on like, yo, what can I do to make this more intriguing? So I'm actually, you know, just just finding different things that can be. Um, swapped you know what i'm saying and it's pretty cool like as you can see all the scenes do something different
five, three. Track three, I'm not sure what it does. Let me see. It's not doing anything here. Okay, yeah, it was muted. All right, this is the hi-hats. Yeah, that's the hi-hats, pretty, pretty straightforward. I just have it doing different things and I added some variation between pattern one and pattern two on this. So we'll, we'll keep going from this, but this is basically the hi-hats. Let's see. This is basically track four with the kick. It's like a secondary kick. Not much there. Obviously, this is one of my favorite like folly sounds that like you know I've had or come across. It's like a it's like change. So I just you know mess around with pitch, different um, ways you can edit it. Um, sometimes more uh, sometimes more uh, reverb can definitely do something interesting with it. I might throw in some flanger. You know, so. Really, I'm like my goal with each scene is just to create chaos. I I have no, I don't care if it, if it's like, you know, obviously be responsible, but you know. Anyways, track six. Uh, nothing really crazy here. This is just the snare. Um, it might not be playing here. There we go. So I actually like the snare a lot. But um, I might not have a whole lot going on at all. So, I mean, outside of like so some of these scenes, I'm really messing around with pitch a little bit, but not so much. So this is really the beat right here. Yeah, so that's some of the sound design that I, you know, I'm going to be messing around with. Um, but yeah, th this is not a finished track. What I plan on doing is throwing this into a DAW, adding some keys, and then probably crafting a full song from this. Um, but yeah, the scenes give you so much to do um, in terms of variation, especially um, from a, you know, drum triggering perspective, you get so much variability out of one pattern. But, you know, in this case, I'm using two patterns. So that much more variability. Uh, you factor in the scenes, uh, probabilities, s stuff like that, trick conditions, whatever. Like, yo, you get mad stuff when you uh, mess with the octa track and it's really cool. Um, you know, my goal for this is to really just... Um, transform sounds and morph sounds into new soundscapes so the listener has an adventure so it's not just a boring you know oh here's a beat no this is like an experience so um yeah definitely thank you for checking this out stay tuned for the full beat